Let's dive into channels then. So um, if you don't have the channel tab open, let's let's get it from here. The second one from the top. And here we go, the channels. So we left off with a dirt channel when we created the project. So um, we have a uh, menu here and we also have a pull down menu here. So you can add channel, there's presets, remote channel, convert channel. And um, so what convert channel, it can convert to different bit depth and stuff like that. So if you have an 8-bit channel you want to make in 16-bit, you can convert it. Channel, dupli duplicate and flatten. So um, yeah. You can flatten the channel, duplicate and flatten, transfer. So this is, you can transfer a, a channel uh, or a, to another object essentially. Um, or like a new version, maybe you have updated um, uh, UVs or something. Um, Pin, I don't use it that often. Uh, so cut, copy and paste, that's essentially what it is. Export, that's something you're gonna do a lot when you export your textures. Um, you can lock and unlock. Resize, so this is um, a channel contains layers and layer contains patches. So if you look at a UV layout on this, so this is what what is talking about is the patch size on the channel. So you can resize it globally, but you can also resize individual patches if if you would want that. So, but you're gonna operate your channels in this uh, menu over here mostly. So let's create a channel and see what we get. So this is the create. Let's go back to the orthographic view to the create new channel. So hit that plus button. And you get a, a dialogue here. So um, the name, that this is what you want to name your channel to. So let, let's make a color. Size. Um, that's the patch size I talked about. So 2K maybe is enough for this asset. Because there's a lot of patches. Uh, color depth of the channel. So yeah, I want to work linearly. So I'm going to take 16 bit. File space normal. So what you have here, you can also paint vectors, but yeah, I'm not going to do that. Not going to paint scalar data. It's going to be a diffuse channel. So this is where you have color options on channels under this color day. Uh, so um, so I paint linearly and um, if I would have said scalar data uh, it was uh, would essentially disable the viewer transform so it would display it without a LUT. So that's, that's what that do. So but um, I want to apply a sRGB or another LUT on top of my linear data so it looks more like you would expect but um, if you would paint the specular roughness or something else that's linear uh, like a bump or let, let's say bump I would set this to scalar data because then you're gonna get the more like the true via values of the scalar instead of uh, applying an sRGB lot uh, on top it's still gonna be the same data in, in the end I guess but it's more for your uh, viewing purpose. So, color. And um, hit OK. So now we have a new color channel. And um, so you have the same menu here, kind of. Copy and paste channels. 
Um, down here you see the options uh, that we set. The 2K patches, the bit depth. It's a linear channel and you, uh, you, you can override it and set it to scalar here if you want and see then it disables the color management on that channel. It's essentially the same as going to here and set it from sRGB to none. So that's that's kind of what it does, but it does it on the actual channel. So if you would even if you would set it to sRGB, it will disable it. So if you make another channel color B. So now when you switch between them, one is going to be uh, applied in sRGB lot. The color now that I disabled the diffuse or essentially disabled the view transform. It's still sRGB down here, but it just disables it on the channel level. So that's something to have in mind. So and when, while we're at the color management down here, you can see you can override uh, exposure and gamma. But I don't think you can do it on a channel that's... Yeah, so... You see down here when I said scalar data. Now when I try to uh, uh, hit the exposure button, it's not going to work because the the view of a transform is disabled on a channel, if that makes sense. So that's something to have in mind. Now when I'm on a diffuse channel without scalar, you can override the exposure and the gamma to check stuff. Um, sometimes I actually wish the view of a transform would still be able to apply on a scalar data because even if you paint like a like a bump map or something or a, like a channel a mask channel mask can we if I look at this in uh, so now it's scalar Let, let's rename it to mask let's pretend this is mask and um, Let's say we use a soft brush and we actually paint. Let's create, select all the patches. I'm just going to fill this with black. Fill all the patches with black. So imagine this would be a mask now. And I want to mask something with white here on the side. And I bake this down. So this is where actually disabling, if you wanna, even if you wanna paint a mask or something, you see when you enable it, it you're gonna apply the sRGB LUT onto your, onto your channel, so sometimes it can actually be nice to see where where the edge of your paint uh, essentially fading off. So sometimes it's good to have a way of overcrank, but when you have uh, it set to scalar, this is disabled. So it could be nice just to be able to switch it off sometimes here as well, just to see like gamma or apply something to see what the actual values is doing. Um, yeah, so um, what else do we have? Well, copy and paste, for example, will make a duplicate of it. And that's kind of uh, essentially what the most common uh, operations you do with channels. So channels is is what you store your layers inside. See if I go to a layer now. Check. 
So a channel contains layers. Let's fill it with red and bake. So um, after you finish painting, let's say you want to export this awesome uh, mask here. Um, you can go right click and export current channel flattened. So this is how you get the, the, the textures out from Mari. So you have this dialog um, first off where you want to put them. So somewhere on your network. Let's make a new folder. Output. And um, so we have a few template um, tokens when you export your channel. Uh, if I uh, hover over the template, I get a little pop up menu. So this is kind of um, uh, like uh, you have the this uh, dollar sign channel entity layer. So uh, if I uh, would say dollar sign channel with capitals, it will take uh, the channel name that you have selected. And you can see down here in the file example what your actual texture uh, is going to be named. In my case, it's going to be main uh, mask dot one thousand and one dot tiff. So the 1001 is the UDIM string, UDIM string. So it's going to be as many UDIMs you have in your model. Um, what color space? So I, I want to export it as uh, same as working linear. And as it is in a 16-bit uh, a channel, I can export it to XRs. Uh, if you would uh, like to have like the model name, you can, if we go back and hover over it. So we have this, uh, what's it called? It's called entity. So if I would say dollar sign entity, now let's copy that dollar sign there, copy, paste, entity. Uh, I can have an underscore if I want. So now if you look at the file example, so it's gonna take the object name and uh, underscore mask, and it gets it by this entity underscore channel UDMEXR. Uh, so if you have a, maybe a way to apply textures on, on a model name, you can insert that suffix. Uh, in there, small textures enabled or disabled. So small textures, that's a way for Mari to optimize file output. So in my case, this channel is like black everywhere and I fill the patches with black. So I haven't really painted on them. So the only patch that's been painted is the one that has this white so I guess those two patches, it's gonna get exported in whatever channel. If I go to the UV view, it's 2K channel. So those two is gonna be, get exported in, uh, in its native 2K format. But everything else is gonna be just eight by eight pixels black because it's a way of optimizing. But as soon as it gets one single pixel somewhere on a patch, if I would, take and go to if I would paint a pixel somewhere on this patch now this patch is also going to be exported in 2k but everything else 8k so that's that's a way to um, optimize uh, file size uh, or bring it down in, in the case it can so let's go back to export uh, where was it? No, oh, we were on. That was a layer. Export current channel flattened. So flattened is if you have a lot of uh, layers, it's gonna flatten them 
into one texture. Um, alpha channel, I usually remove it if I don't want alphas. Um, yeah, uh, let's go. Where did I? Projects. Um, ah, yes, let's make a folder here then. Uh, out. And channel udim xr and export all patches uh, in the case you have selected one patch you have the option to just export just that patch or those patches uh, let's let's select those and go export again out so now you have export selected patches or all patches if you say selected patches then uh, obviously only those patches that you select are gonna be flat and exported let's take all patches so now it's gonna flatten down your channel and export it to disk and that's how you get textures out from mari so uh, let's uh, dive into layer system next.